This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. On the show today, you'll find out where book publishing is going and how to take advantage of it. How to identify and avoid publishing predators. What opportunities are emerging as the book trade evolves in new forms. How to avoid losing money and much, much more. Join us now as a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take the author to the next, next level of publishing. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Brought to you by Author You and The Book Shepherd. And now, here's your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Welcome back to another edition of Author You, your guide to book publishing. I'm your host, Judith Browse, the book shepherd. And with me today is one of my very favorite, favorite, favorite all-time people, Daniel Hall, who I always think of the king of the king of the king, maybe the emperor of webinars. Emperor, wow. emperor. you like that, Daniel? Emperor. <laughs> Why not? Uh, <laughs> emperor of the universe. Of, of really information on content, on webinars that really focuses on authors, on writers, and publishing success. Now, Daniel has an amazing pedigree, and the DNA he brings to it is from a holistic side, um, from his whole healthcare perspective as really a, an RN of a gazillion years, but really what he morphed in and, and moved to was really the area of supplying information and education. And with his background in law and a law degree, he's able to incorporate all that to make sure that you as an author have the most up-to-date uh, information that is succinct, concise, and clear that you can immediately implement and execute for your own author success. Now, last night, we did an amazing webinar. We're going to go through some of the how-tos because we're going to share the offer that we did with you on how to to create detailed, high-content, extraordinarily fast and unbelievably cheap with your content that you have from your books. Think about presentations that you've done. Think about maybe some slides you've already put together or you hadn't thought about, but Daniel's going to show you how, tell you how, describe how to do that with that and take that to immediately create a product that you can sell. He's the brains behind real fast everything and he'll get into it. Because this is what we're going to do. We're going to show you how to create real fast content of your immediate material that you've already created and published, as well as stuff that you're working on. Does that sound like something you might be interested in? Let me tell you, I am, because I have done over, oh, uh, over a thousand presentations. I have over 150 PowerPoint presentations that I immediately saw how I can morph, change, modify, and immediately turn into a product when I have the window of time. How cool is that? We're going to show you how. So get ready. Daniel, welcome back. Thank you so much for having me, Judith. It's always an honor and a privilege privilege to get to chat with you. And I love this idea of taking your content and putting it into different formats and getting it up on different marketplaces. Because one of the things that, as you well know, I get asked all the time is, Daniel, I have this information. I've got this subject matter. Maybe it's the subject matter that might be in your book, right? And they ask, well, where else should I have this? Where, you know, what, what other format? And I always say, it doesn't, you, because we don't know where our, you know, our clients are coming from, our, our prospects, our potential customers, um, that you should have it in as many different formats as is possible. So <clears throat> one of the
one of the things that I wanted to cover today was how to actually take that knowledge that maybe went into your into your uh, book um, or that's still in your head and get it into some forms that are that have a higher perceived value than just a book uh, so that you could sell that as well. So that's what I intend to do today. Well, I, I can't think of anything better to do, Daniel. And, and literally, you know, I've been around this merry-go-round a lot of times, but I love it when light bulbs go off for me. And I've always felt that I will sit in a lecture and attendance. If I come away with one golden nugget, it's a, it's a home run for me. I didn't get golden nuggets from our webinar last night. I got a bunch of diamonds and I love that. I love that. So let's jump in and start sharing our, our information as we move along. Okay. So w one of the things that um, that I taught on the webinar, and by the way, uh, if, if you want to see the, the specific step-by-step -step on what exactly it is that I'm sort of describing or will describe here in just a second, um, that URL will be available. In other words, the website where you could actually watch it is mm -hmm. going to be available at realfastinfoproduct.com forward slash Judith. So that's where we're putting up the replay for uh, tomorrow or last night's uh, webinar. So, um, uh, again, refer back to that if, if you need to. So the, the thing that I, I wanted to, to basically say was, or is that there are, I think the best thing to do, Judith, is to start off with, the, with a comparison and compare and contrast the perceived value of your subject matter in a book versus an information product. Because what I'd like to chat about is taking and um, – morphing your your subject matter into um, in it, it, you know if it's presently in a book and I, I assume that if you're you're listening to Judith you're following Judith um, that you probably either have a book or are interested in publishing book you know, a book which is great that's how I got started and um, I, I, I really really you know love that idea uh, but the thing that I want you to understand is that a book really only goes so far. And I'll give you sort of a, uh, a mind experiment here. Just kind of think, if you went and you got the, uh, you know, your, a, a book that you really, really wanted, what's sort of the upper level of price that you would pay for it? And I would submit to you, for the most part, that the upper level price, I mean, tippy tippy top, would be about thirty-five dollars. If you went into Barnes and Noble or went to Amazon, uh, found a book, and it was any more than 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 about thirty-five dollars, um, you're going to have you know some pushback from many many people. So the the point I want to make is that for the most part, the perceived value of a book is relatively low. Now, let's compare and contrast that with a, an information product. And before I actually do that, I want to define what I mean by an information product so we're all kind of on the same page. Um, an information product is essentially a course, an online course usually, that usually has a number of videos. It might have some other media, maybe audio, and maybe some PDFs that go along with it, but um, there, there, there are various other modalities um, to, to the content, format, in other words, to the content that we, we can access uh, online. Okay? Uh, Udemy is a good example of, of this. Uh, they, they do it in MOS, right? And there are lots of other places uh, that you can see where people put up their, their courses, their information products, and, um, and you know, uh, put up that put up that sort of course, but here's the thing. Let's kind of going back to our comparison, um, and the the point is is that you could take that content that would go into your book that maybe has a upper price 
range of $35 and uh, bring it over to um, into an information product in the same or substantially similar content in an information product might sell for $97 or $197 or $597. And the point being is that it's the same content uh, is being used in both or substantially similar. Maybe in the information product, it's, it's a little deeper, um, but, um, but generally, generally not, right? Generally, that's, that's not the, the, the issue. And that right there um, is meant to inform you, to in, uh, motivate you, to encourage you to take your content, your subject matter that's in your book, and, and put it into some of these other formats with a higher perceived value, all right? Now, the easiest method that I have found to do that is um, by and through uh, something uh, that, that, I, uh, that it's available to you for completely for free. And Judith mentioned having slides from your talk. So mm -hmm. one of the things is, is that you take your, your, your content or your solution, the solutions that you have uh, described in your book, and you put them, put them up on a, um, on, uh, you know, in, in a PowerPoint program or PowerPoint slide. And, uh, and, and essentially, you, you do that for all the subject matter or all the, all the steps in the solution that make up your subject matter. So I, I, you know, conceptually think, think about your subject matter, whatever the subject matter of your book is as a, as a process, as a, as a solution process to some problem that the book addresses. And <clears throat> when you do this, you take distinct parts. We'll, we'll call them chapters or even sub chapters and each chapter and or sub chapter um, you take out the the core elements that might be in your book but you you actually put put say one chapter in um, one module or, or one slide deck and you basically do bullet points in your slide deck in your PowerPoint that cover the hot the, the highlights of that particular content and now, you, you, and you basically do that for your entire book. And it's not meant to be read um, or it's not, it's basically, it's just bullet points. It's not like, um, you know, all of the content in your book, obviously. It's really kind of meant to trigger your memory um, and help the watcher to, to actually follow along. Now, I realize right. that. Is this, Daniel, let me ahead. let me hold you here. Hold that point because we need to take a quick break and we'll come back to because I think the whole bullet point idea really is imperative, especially with the learning modes today to set it up. And one of the things that you do so well, which I think is important to also is you always set it up and tell people, here's what my promise is. And I think that's always the hot thing that authors need to keep in mind. We'll be right back. This is Judith Bryles. It's author you, your guide to book publishing. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Is there a book in you? Or another, Author You will show you how to create, develop, and publish your book without being good. If you already have a book out, You'll find a supportive and brainstorming community that's connected and creative no matter where you live. Author U brings in national experts for its book camps and annual author extravaganza held each May. It has regular meetings and delivers webinars for its members on timely topics. Through Author U's extensive network, members enjoy exclusive benefits, including significant discounts for a variety of services necessary to publish. The Resource, its online book publishing news magazine, is content heavy and it's free. If you want to create a book that has possessed punch and panache author you is for you if you're a hobbyist or a casual author it's not join author you today through its website at authoryou.org 
Follow Author You on Twitter at Author You and on Facebook at Author You, where timely author and publishing tips and articles are posted daily. Author You, where the author goes to become seriously successful. Every picture tells a story, and it's a truism that people do judge a book by its cover. Nick Selinger and NZ Graphics have been in the business of producing superior graphic cover design and interior layout for self-published authors, independent and traditional publishers for years. He has developed a reputation for... Excellent work, fast turnarounds, and best of all, affordable pricing. NZ Graphics also produces ebooks and book marketing materials such as posters, sell sheets, postcards, bookmarks, business cards, logos, and more. Books designed for his clients have won multiple book awards, including Best Book Award by U.S. Book News, multiple Evie Awards from the Colorado Independent Publishers Association, Indie Book Awards, the San Francisco Book Festival Award, and Freedom Medal Award from Valley Forge. Visit www.nzgraphics.com or call 303-985-4174 for more details about making your book the success it should be. Mention that you are an FOJ, friend of Judith's, and that you heard about NZ Graphics on your guide to book publishing. One of the most important decisions you will ever make is your choice for printing your book. You are choosing a company which will be responsible for guiding you through the process and printing your book at a level of quality and detail that embraces your personal and creative needs. You want to choose a company that when your book finally arrives, you are delighted and ready to move on to the next level and one that is customer focused. Choose King Printing Company and Addy Books to be that company that brings you to the next level. Go to kingprinting.com or call 978 978- Four five eight two three four five, and ask for Tom Campbell. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All right, so we're back. I stopped Daniel right in as he was moving into the setup of the bullet point um, because this is such a critical point in understanding the learnality, the, the, the learnality, I don't know if that's even a word, the, the way people learn and get ready to process this amazing information you're going to tell them. So, and I, and I alluded to what Daniel talks about is the promise. So I think Daniel, I'd love to have you kiss on that because this is the bullet point set up the promise. Is that not right? Yeah, well, the, I, I'm, yes, that is true. Um, I wanted to kind of explain the whole thing first, but okay, yes, great. Um, so that you can kind of, Kind of get, got a big picture of, of the process, and then yeah, I was I, I wanted to talk about the promise. But since we've raised it now, let's go ahead and handle it now. When you your very first slide deck, your very the very first thing that you cover in your your very first module, if you will, is a promise. You basically tell people why it is they should listen to your your material, why it is. They should um, uh, get uh, get value from, uh, or, you know, why should they stick around and pay attention to you, basically. And um, and that sets the expectation as to what it is you're going to cover. So, yeah, we do that in the, in the very first slide deck. Um, and, and that, again, is super important because it lets people make a decision as to whether they want to go on or not. Um, and... Uh, Meeting and exceeding expectations is one of the things that you definitely want to do uh, long term, right? 
Yeah, right, there's no so question. Yeah, yeah, go yeah, and there's yeah. no question. Now, what I always love what you do um, in the process. I mean, we spent an hour and a half together um, in, in working through this with our attendees and that you kept coming back and checkpointing with them. You know, am I meeting your expectations? And you, you, you got them to give you feedback. Um, I mean, I know you do that to make sure that there's a tension going on. I mean, I understand that part of it. But it also is to make sure that they're buying in um, as, as you move into it. Now, we are just I want to make sure that folks are real, real clear um, that we're really now talking about apples and oranges. Because in a, in a webinar environment where we were live, like we were live last night, that's a whole different, um, mm-hmm. it's similar but different in, in the methodologies used, right? What, what mm-hmm. I'm, uh, and we could definitely talk about that if you want to talk about that. But, but what, I'm, what I'd like to, to, to get across to folks is the, is the method for the actual creation of the product. Um, it, which is not like that because you're usually you're actually usually creating the product alone. It's just you and your computer essentially. Um, and, uh, and 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 by the way, to, to you know sort of highlight the point, uh, when you go over to real fast, uh, excuse me, real fast info product dot com forward slash Judith, you could watch the replay there, um, and and you can see what Judith is talking about here. How I'm checking in with the with the live crowd as we as we sort of go through it. But it, but that's again slightly different than the creation of the of the product itself. So th- which direction you want to go, Judith? No, no. Let's get let's go ahead and get into the product, the whole development, because doing. I think what we should do is really a, a whole podcast on how you create a webinar. That might be a smart thing to, for us to do at a later time, Daniel. So let's just get into what we were, you know, the development of the info product and the step by step. Sounds good. So the the, the so going back to the development of your slides and the bullet points, right? Because mm-hmm. the uh, the again, we're, I, I'm going to assume that you have subject matter that you want to disseminate in other formats. Because why? Because it has a higher perceived value, or it may have a higher perceived value in other uh, other formats. And I and I described the the, the course um, is basically an online course that has it has videos and it may have other um, other. Uh, File formats might have, may have audio, for example. It might have PDF in, a, in addition to the, the, the video. But almost always the, the base of an information product is some sort of video. And, um, and when I say video, I, I'm not talking about a, uh, uh, essentially a, a live action or talking head type of video. I'm talking about a screen capture video. This is where you put your slides up that I'm describing how to make right now. Mm-hmm. But you put, put your slides up on the screen, on your computer screen, and using a special piece of software um, called Jing, J-I-N-G, uh, it, it is completely free, uh, you can actually record what's going on on your screen. So the, the, the whole idea here is to, to actually re, uh, narrate yourself through the process, through the slides that you have created for your, your book or, or from your book, essentially. And uh, going back to this idea of setting up um, chapters, so it's generally, if you already have your book, you could just use, use the organizational structure that you have in your book that translo- translates over, in most cases, fairly nicely into an online course where you're taking the, the highlights, the, 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 the major talking points that you might have that, in, in a particular chapter of your book, but you're, just, you're making them as like one line um, of, of, or maybe even one word or maybe even a picture um, on, on your slide deck that, that you're going to then later record. And you're going to basically do this for the whole book. 
So you're gonna, for chapter one, you might do one slide deck. For chapter two, you're going to do two, you know the, the next one, three, etc. And once you have your uh, your slides done, and by the way, um, if you're going to use Jing, J I N G, you have a five minute per video limit, which is actually a good thing because people don't like to listen or watch any more than about five minutes at a time. And they also like to see that they're making progress through the content. So if you have, if you have short videos, uh, five minutes or less, through the content, that, that gives people a sense of movement and momentum. And it's a good thing because you're going to have more people actually com completing <clears throat> your, um, your content. Now, in, in, this, in this way, it's really, really a, a, crucial, a crucial element to break up your, um, your, your slide into a, a small of bite-sized nuggets of, uh, of uh, distinct content as possible. In other words, I'll, I'll, let, let's, just, let's just say that there is a, your book describes a three-step process. Right, a three-step, big big picture, three steps to you know getting the result that that you're promising in the title of your information product. But what I want you to do is I want you to take um, take these three steps and to the extent you can break those steps into smaller sort of sub steps. And you you want to you want to get it down so that each slide deck is four, uh, four to five slides per, um, per module, right? Because, you, uh, because with Jing, at least, you have, you have to, you have, to uh, have five minutes or less. So that's about, that's about five slides. At least that's for me. Five slides equals about five minutes of me talking. And the, the, the point that I want to make here is that once you have your your slides develop, and it doesn't take long to do this because, heck, you have the content from your book right in front of you, right? Just going through and deciding, you know, what it is you want to cover in your information product. But let's, let's say you have your, um, all of your slides done. Then coming back, you're just going to uh, fire up Jing, J-I-N-G again, and you're going to narrate or teach the slides that you created in five-minute chunks, right, in five-minute chunks. Now, the really cool thing about Jing, and one of the reasons why I, I recommend it for especially newbie information product creators is, of course, it's free. That's always cool. But also, it allows you, the information product creator, to, to uh, upload the video to, uh, to something called screencast.com, which is an account that you get free when you download J-I-N-G, when you, when you download Jing. So they actually, they, they actually talk to one another. And you could, you could then go through and narrate your slides. And let's say that there are you know, 10, 10 different um, uh, modules or 10 different slide decks to get through your, um, to the content of your book. And um, you, uh, you, you're just going to narrate it. You're going to teach, one, you know, uh, module one and go through it. And then upload it, to, uh, which is a very easy process. Uh, you just hit a button on the software, and it uploads it to uh, screencast.com. And then it spits back. This is the beautiful thing about it. It spits back a, um, a, a, uh, a link, just a link, just a, just a clickable hyperlink. And you take that hyperlink and you essentially embed it into an MS Word document. And, and that actually, you do that for each step in your module. One, one module equals one link, right, all the way on through. But here's, here's the rub, and here's what makes it so easy for a newbie uh, information product creator. Once, once you have all of your modules made and uploaded, um, you can then – make a PDF document out of um, uh, that, uh, that MS Word document, and that PDF 
that actually becomes your product. That's the deliverable. When people pay you for your for your information product, you're 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 giving them a just a PDF document. And the the great beauty of that is that when you do it that way, um, it's number one easy uh, easy for you to deliver it. Easy for you, the product creator, to deliver it because it's just a it's just a PDF file. And more importantly, it's easy for your customer to consume it, right? They, it, it, you know, you're not going to have people getting locked out of, uh, you know, a, uh, a website or a membership site or anything like that or losing their, their login or, you know, all the, all the technical stuff that happens. Um, well, the, the other side of that minimize is... Yeah, the minimizing is really important. And you're thinking about the whole delivery of content and even, you know, the much shorter chapters that books need to have today. You know, things don't go on in perpetuity. And that's really the mindset. All right, so with that, we're going to take another quick break. We'll be right back with Daniel Hall and really the step-by-step -step of how you can create this high content information into a video product quickly, cheaply, that really will add to your own publishing empire. This is Author You, your guide to book publishing. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Since 1987, Color House Graphics has set the standard for quality book production. Whether you decide to print a small quantity of books or need a large print run, depend on Color House to help you. You'll receive professional help and advice the moment you reach one of our representatives. If you mention hearing about us on your guide to book publishing, Judith Bryles, we will provide you a discount on the first order you place. To speak with a project manager, call us toll free at 800-454-1916 or visit us at www.colorhousegraphics.com. Want to publish like a pro today? Well, then take a look at Ingram Spark, the only publishing platform that offers print and ebook services through a single source. Upload, edit, and manage titles all in one place. Take more control of printing costs with print on demand and reach even more readers through one of the world's most extensive distribution networks. Built by independent publishers for independent publishers, Ingram Spark has everything you need to maximize your book's potential color printing, ebook distribution, print on demand, global reach, and more. Start publishing with Ingram Spark today and see just how far your titles will go tomorrow. That's IngramSpark.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Coming up, you'll hear more about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All right, so Daniel was just kissing on the, the components of why we keep it short. One, for it's easier for you to really put together things in a short, concise area with a few bullet points in five minutes or less using this awesome, awesome tool called Jing, J-I-N-G, which I love because it's F-R-E-E. -E. And the second thing is that for the listener and user, learner, it's when you do it in these little modules, in, in writing, we also call, we call it, you know, we need to give the reader a bathroom break. So you give them that break to digest what you're telling them before they go to the next chapter or module with it. So, Daniel, back to you. Yeah, so that's a super important point. And what you're going to do sort of through this whole entire process is help, um, you know, and basically what I've, I've described about how you make your very first information mm -hmm. product. You, yeah. you're you know, just to kind of, kind of roll through it one more time. You're going to take, create, uh, create PowerPoint slides 
based on uh, the content in your book. You're going to try to keep those slides. Uh, you're going to break them up so that they logically flow from one to another, but no more than about four or five slides per chapter or sub-chapter, or maybe even sub-sub-chapter if, that, if, it, if that's how it breaks out. You're going to narrate or teach what's on your slides in five-minute increments. You're going to be then uploading each one of those videos to screencast through jing.com, which is going to spit you back a link, which is then what you're going to embed into your uh, into your, your Word document, uh, and you're going to do that for your entire book. And then once you've done that, or for your entire product, excuse me, um, and then once you've done that, that you're going to make that um, MS Word uh, document into a PDF, and that PDF becomes your deliverable. So that's the process in about, uh, what, 30 seconds. <laughs> that, that's that's it and you know and, and i should add on here for everyone that depending upon and this works by the way for fiction and non-fiction books by and it's you know, we're not we are not separating this in in either matter here and the other side of that is especially for those who you do have in the non-fiction area i have seen many non-fiction books uh put together that authors think they have to get it all out they never think about maybe i have two books here Maybe I have three books, and it could very well be it, just a chapter or two, not the whole book, could be an entire info product. So Absolutely. Don't, yeah, don't that think you so have to true. cram it all. Don't think you have to cram it all into one area. You may have a book with 10, 12 chapters that could very well indeed be eight separate products. Mm-hmm. Yep, easily. And I love that yeah. idea because here's the other thing about about stuff that you handle in books. Now, making products the, the way I've just described, um, it, it, they, it lends itself to what I call the, the one-in-one formula. That is, you, you identify one problem that your audience is having and um, – and then you give them one solution, so one and one. So one problem, one solution, that's what goes into um, one of these uh, information pro- – that's, that's actually probably the best, uh, uh, the, the best format to use with this particular way of building an information product. Yep, I – I, I think that, uh, and, and I have to tell you, I've listened to a gazillion of your webinars on doing these kind of things. This is the first time um, it, it's really kind of clicked over. I can say oh, exactly how I can do it, do it, do it. That's why I want to encourage everybody to take advantage and watch the webinar. I mean, you've got the podcast and watch the webinar where you see the visual step by step of how Daniel put it together and taught everyone. It, you know, it's going it, to it put put together an hour and a half. Put it aside because it will change how you think, how you do in process. And I'm also Daniel. I I think you probably are a believer of this. You can hear it. Sometimes it clicks right away, and you're going to immediately run with it. But sometimes you have to hear it over and over and over before it really sinks in, and you see how you're going to pull it together. Um, and I know that when I really saw the visual display uh, last night, it really came together and the aha went off. And I saw, I see exactly how to do this baby now. And so that's yep. why it was life changing for me. So would you give the website one more time for them to go to? Yeah, it's realfastinfoproduct.com forward slash Judith. Real fast info product.com forward slash Judith. That will take you to uh, the uh, the page where you could you could watch. And if you are um, if you could you know get over there in the next couple of days, you're, you'll get a great deal on, on the uh, on the offer that we make there. But even if you're not interested in the offer, I would still encourage you to go and uh, watch the webinar because it's, it's very. Uh, as Judith says, it's uh, you know it can be life changing just just watching the free thing. So um, yeah, go on over again, realfastinfoproduct.com forward slash Judith. 
Uh, it just it just makes a huge difference for all of you. All right, so we've got our idea. We we've got it all together. What other goodies do we need to add on into the development of this, Daniel? Well, I mean, it's um, nice to have some. Um, you know, not, it's not just a. You're not just going to publish a PDF with uh, with you know links. You know to to you know the, these videos that you've made. Um, what I strongly suggest is that you you pop a cover onto the the you know this really it's 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 kind of like a uh, enhanced ebook is really what this is. Um, mm-hmm. so you pop in a nice cover, um, and then you also do a uh, basically a description or or an introduction to what it is you're covering um, with each uh, with with each module or with each link in there. And um, I, I also like to put in a, um, a uh, you know, some, some uh, additional related offer. So you could actually, um, you know, have people to, you know, buy other things from you and take a look at other offers from you there or get on mail list, uh, email list from there. There's so many things you could do with a, an asset like this. All right, so Daniel, this this is kind of presentation where we we have our stagnant slides and that kind of thing. What about adding in? Is it possible to to add in maybe uh, you you create a video of some sort that you could drop in that is you know obviously pre recorded and all that, but you could mm-hmm. give them a sense of you being live. Is that possible? Well, absolutely. It, it's uh, one of the one of the ways that that I do that. One of the ways you could do this is um, by and for free on top of it um, is you could get on and just teach a <laughs> uh, like a private uh, Google Hangout, and it'll up it'll automatically upload it um, to to uh, YouTube, and um, and then you could you know link to it from your document directly over to YouTube to an unlisted page there. So that that's another way that you could do exactly what I've just said. Or, or it's, so that's one way. Could you actually also just make a separate video that you could drop into it that would show, you know, um, that maybe you did with your own camera set in your office or something? Or you maybe well, wanted to do it doing on the Google Hangout, though. Okay, yeah, so you it's, yeah, that's that's what you're doing there. And the reason why I sort of send people there is again, it's, it, there's a very low threshold um, of entry. You, you as long as you have a Google account, you could you could all do it. Um, mm-hmm. And and it and it's not not a you know it's not a bad um, a bad thing to do. I would, however, suggest that you not start with that. Uh, I would I would if you're just getting started, this is your very first information mm-hmm. product. Um, start with something that's manageable, and the more tech that you try to add into something, the the greater the intensity of a train wreck. So <laughs> don't don't do that. Uh, again, uh, unless you're unless you're comfortable with the technology, unless you're unless you're comfortable with the do it, you know, kind of get it down the, the first time uh, using the, the simplest, easiest, most basic. Um, approach, and then yeah, once maybe you, maybe maybe it starts selling really really well, um, and you want to do an updated, a uh, higher higher level version, um, then then yeah, then you know you, the the product has a proven track record, then absolutely, then then the, the time effort energy that it it uh, it takes to make the higher level production might might well um, serve you, it you know, but. You, Again, don't start that way. That's that's my humble opinion. Because I I want everyone listening to uh, this presentation and watching the the webinar to be just you know super wildly successful. And uh, you know if if in uh, just years of training and educating folks, um, I, I've I've just learned that if you start them off um, on a uh, you know on something that's too too techy, too many moving parts. Um, the, the higher the probabilities that they just like they throw up their hands, uh, don't they don't do it at all, or if they do it, they they, they run into some problems and then, then just give up, and then it's just all for naught. And I don't want well, that. Yeah, and then you're right. That's where you do run into the train wrecks. 
and mm-hmm. and you, tr- you you try to do all the bells and whistles. I mean, I've always said about using PowerPoints because um, in the PowerPoints and all the variations, there there can be a lot of bells and whistles. And my my own personal experience is as someone who has been on the platform for over thirty years, is the more bells and whistles you bring in, the more screw ups will happen. And that exactly that that uh, the technicians would always ask me, so what kind of automations do you want? What can, you know? What animations do you want? Any other videos coming in? And and I would say I am the video. I, I, right. I, right. And, and I have been in situations. I mean, Robert got caught in a hurricane going into uh, um, New Orleans one time that I had uh-huh. to do a presentation in a huge hotel, and we did it by candlelight because there was no lights. And it, it oh was awesome. It was awesome. It was, you know, it was my voice. And because, you know, I obviously wrote the material, I knew the material, but as a speaker, as a presenter, as the expert, anyone has to realize that they are the one that's going to be the driving force here. And you should be, you know, sometimes maybe what we should say is sometimes less is more. Sometimes less is more. Definitely. Especially when you're, again, if you're just starting out, just do what I just said without, without looking for the bells and whistles. And, and seeing, that's the other thing, too, is you, you want to create a minimum viable product mm-hmm. um, and, and, and see whether the marketplace responds to that product. Uh, you know, if you, and if you, if you kind of keep it um, as uh, spartan as, as possible, um, yeah, you, you, you know, there's, there's a lot less invested, obviously. And, um, and then if it starts taking off, it starts gaining traction because there's a demand for it in the marketplace, then yeah, then, then yeah, step up the game, make it, make it a higher production value. And you can keep doing that, but less is more. All right. We're going to take our final break here. And then when we come back, we're going to talk about something that everyone is interested in and it's called money. What can you expect when you start down this path? We'll be right back. It's Author You, your guide to book publishing. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. The book shepherding concept is simple. The publishing world is changing, and so must you. You need an experienced shepherd and a guide to partner with you as you create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve your publishing goals. You can't do it alone without paying the price. You can spend your money creating a book that turns out to be so-so, or you can create a book that looks and feels classy, builds your brand, and is a financial success, a bestseller. It's your choice. You choose. You need the book shepherd. Publishing is riddled with obstacles, sometimes nightmares for the author. You don't need problems. You want solutions. Dr. Judith Bryles will shepherd you through the maze and the chaos. At times, she's had to step in and rescue a book, a book that has been sabotaged by a publisher or by a publishing service provider or sometimes even the author themselves. Judith Bryles is the book shepherd. If you want to create a book with no regrets, give her a call today, 303-885-2207. That's 303-885-2207 or email her at judith at bryles.com. By the way, Bryles is spelled B-R-I-L-E-S. Follow Judith on Twitter at MyBookShepherd and on Facebook at TheBookShepherd. At Total Printing Systems, customer service is our priority. We are located in Southern Illinois. Our employees have an average of 18 years experience and know that customer relationships are important to our continued success. We have been a short run book printer for nearly 40 years and always stay at the forefront of technology. Our niche is from one to 5,000 copies. Today, we offer digital black and white and four color high speed inkjet printing, a cost effective way to introduce color into your short run titles. We, of course, offer traditional offset printing as well. Bindery is done in house, from adhesive case binding to PUR perfect binding to mechanical binding of all types, including side sewing. We provide warehousing, kitting, distribution, inventory management, a new print on demand facility, streaming browser based ebooks, and bookstore. 
call us at 1-800-465-5200 for a quote on your next book project. You can also visit our website at www.tps1.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All right. So now you've got the, the what is an info product. You've got the critical steps of putting it together under the awesome guidance of Daniel Hall, master, oh no, emperor, emperor of the universe <laughs> of creating <laughs> info products. Um, and, and now we're going to talk about what can you expect when you're expecting and that uh, what you're going to hear and reveal during this segment is that it can change your life. It can change your cash flow. It can change the way you go to work every day. So, Daniel, let's kind of set this up. Um, when you started on this, what, what were your own expectations? Oh, my. Um my my expectations uh, really well, as you know, or you, maybe you know, I think you know. Um, it, you know, I started off um, as a as a as an author of a book called Speak on Cruise Ships: Eight Easy Steps to a Lifetime of Free Luxury Cruises, which is, of course is available on Amazon.com currently. But I originally published it um, on uh, on my own as a, as an ebook. And um, I, I turned out, and, and it was just a textual PDF document. That's what I sold, right? And, and um, I started off selling it at $37. And, and it was one of those kinds of things where, you know, pretty much the, I didn't do any promotion of it, and it just started selling. Now, this, these are back, this was 2004, I think it was, maybe it was 2003, I don't remember the exact day that I came out with the book, but it, but it was, you know, in that era, so say 2004 to 2006, somewhere in there. And um, pretty much the thing started to sell right off the bat and without, without much, if any, promotion from me. And I, I've then relatively quickly increased the price from $37 to $97. And something amazing happened. Um, I actually sold more copies at ninety-seven dollars than I did at thirty-seven dollars. Whoa! And I thought, oh yeah. Uh, so there, there, there's a, there's maybe a nugget for folks. Um, and I said, oh, I really like this. Now I was doing other things at, at the time. I mean, this was not the focus of my life. So going back to your question, I, expectations. I really didn't have any expectations. Although I really liked, I, I like when you know just these uh, ninety-seven dollar uh, payments would hit my account, uh, you know, two or three or four times a week, and I'm like, wow, this is pretty nice, you know, <laughs> this is very nice, in fact. And um, you know, the more I sort of uh, did that, the more I sort of thought, oh, this is pretty. This is, I need to, I need to spend more time with this. Now, at the time, I'd, I'd retired from the practice of law and was just doing real estate. And this was in, again, 2006, 2007. And so real estate was my, my primary focus. And in 2008, well, you all you know what happened in 2008, 2009. Basically, the real estate market fell out. And um, I was basically looking out, looking down the barrel of having to go back to work as a lawyer, which I didn't really want to ever do. Um, so the, the thing that was on the back burner all this time was my cruise speaking book. And it, and it continued to sell. So I'm, I'm thinking to myself, oh, my, maybe I should put my time, effort, and focus over here in, you know, in what I'm doing with publishing. And, and, and that's, that's what I did. And I'm so glad that I did because in that process, I learned that one of the best ways to, uh, to sell um, information products is 
from a book, okay? Uh, so people, you know, in, in, in the pages of your book, in other words, you can sell, you know, your, your, uh, your higher price information product related to your book or the content of your book. Now, what, a, what I found with that was that there is a sort of an upper limit of um, what people will pay for there. Um, and it's about about a hundred dollars. You could do anything over a hundred dollars. Again, it depends on your subject uh, subject matter, of course, and uh, and uh, you know, and what the the acuity of the problem that your book solves. Um, but just say a hundred bucks. Let's just say, as a rule of thumb, that that's about what you can expect if you're selling your your product, your information product, directly from your book. So here's where it gets really, really nice, because if you do, um, so this was sort of the next step in my evolution. I know you've mentioned me on webinars several times during our interview today, and that's because it was about it was about that time that I figured out that I could sell a higher price product, information product from webinars, and, um, and when I figured that out. Um, I, you know, basically we went from a, you know, a six-figure business to um, most years seven figures. Um, so it, it, it exponentially increased the, um, you know, the, the income that comes in. Um, and that was by and through webinars. So I learned to do webinars to sell information products um, at higher price points. And, um, you know, that, that's not to say you have to do it that way. There, there are plenty of people that sell them through uh, what's called a launch sequence, uh, which I've never really subscribed to. I'm, I'm not saying that it doesn't work. It, 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 absolutely, it absolutely works. Just it never, it never really appealed to how I like to uh, approach things. Um, and so there, there are a variety of other, of, of other um, marketing mechanisms that can help sell the, uh, the course. And, and one of those, by the way, is a, um, is a platform like Udemy, where you can basically publish your courses um, directly onto Udemy or uh, now Amazon Video Direct. So you could do that as well. Um, and there, there are actually others, uh, sites like Skillshare is another, what's called a, um, they're called MOOCs, Massive um, Open Campus, blah, 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 something like that, M-O-O-K-S, a massive open, uh, anyway, that's what they're called, and that's what, that's what it is, <laughs> right? So it's Udemy, Skillshare, then there's a variety of others uh, out there, uh, Amazon Video Direct, and so you can get your courses up there and sell, and, and that's that's a, a big part of the direction that uh, that I've gone as well, um, because uh, I I like to, um, and this, this is a really really crucial point when it when it comes to these platforms. I do I never I wouldn't say never I rarely send people to my courses on on Udemy or or Skillshare, or, or on Amazon. Um, and the reason is, is that I, I look at it as, no, nope, they've got to send people to me, right? I'm, I'm not there to make, you know, Amazon's list bigger. I'm, at, I'm, I'm, I'm there to, to siphon off um, uh, people that are already on Amazon who, who, who then discover me, okay? So that's a really important distinction, and that's not to say that you can't do marketing to these courses, um, but by and large, uh, I, if I have a course on um, on Udemy or on Amazon Video Direct, uh, I will also have a uh, a similar version, may not be the same version of the course, um, on my own website because you're in, in every instance you're going to be able to sell your um, the course that's on your website. Um, at a much much higher price point than than you would be able to on um, say Udemy for example. All right, so, so that's my question. So so you, there's not a consistent price across the board. There's different prices out there. Correct. 
And, mm. and, and again, what, you, what you're looking at is the acuity of the problem that you are solving. In other words, what I'm, what I'm trying to express here is that if the, the problem that your, your information product remedies is a very painful pro, uh, problem that people have and that are motivated to get rid of this painful problem, <clears throat> That means that they are going to uh, that, that the value of that product is has a much higher a higher value in their eyes because uh, they really want to get rid of the pain, right? Of whatever that that. All right. Is so, so if you put it up on Udemy or the Amazon video, then mm -hmm. I, I'm my my uh, I'm I'm speculating here that maybe you should only put a couple up with a teaser that would lead you to your website and your other products that then you can full, full bore and let them know um, you have a humongous portfolio to pour, pull from. Is that a possibility? <clears throat> yes. Um, yes, but. Okay. Um, one of the but. things that these, mm -hmm. these sites um, do, uh, or they very, very closely uh, restrict, um, mm -hmm. is they, they realize uh, that folks um, uh, like me and you are out here and that mm -hmm. we, we want to pull people off their platform um, and bring them on into our party, right, our personal party, mm -hmm. right? So um, there are uh, – so they, they actually prohibit some of that kind of contact. Um, let, let's take, for example, Udemy for just a second. Um, with Udemy, you cannot – send people off of uh, Udemy to, um, to, your, um, you know, to your page or, or whatnot. But what you can do, so there are, there are things that are permissible. And this is the thing I love about Udemy, by the way, that you do not have with Amazon. With Udemy, um, you get four what are called educational announcements and two promotional announcements that you can send every month, okay? So that means that you can send an email to your students using the Udemy platform, and you can send essentially one, or excuse me, yeah, one uh, educational announcement a, um, a, a week, four weeks of the, of the month, and, 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 and then an additional two that are promotional uh, type of announcements to other courses that you may have on Udemy. And they can right, only so, be yours. All right. So what you're saying is Udemy, if you're going to choose one or the two, you go to Udemy first. You know, and with that, I hate to say this, we are literally out of time. So, Daniel, let's give them realfastinfoproducts.com. Is it product or products? Plural. Realfastinfoproducts.com. All right. Forward slash singular. Student. Singular. Mm -hmm. Okay. So a real fast info product dot com forward slash Judith. Get the replay of everything we've been talking about really pronto. There is an amazing deal offered with it. Take advantage of it. I jumped on it. Um, and I know that I had a lot of my clients jumped on it and I'm going to be doing a big push out to everyone because learning how to do these info products will expand your empire. And if you want to go from maybe four digits to five digits to six digits to seven digits in income, it takes a little time, but this is going to be your avenue. Daniel Hall will show you the way. Thank you so much, Daniel, for being with us today. Thanks for the opportunity, Judith. All right. We'll be right back. See you next week. We have a lot more information for you. Happy publishing. Thank you for being a part of your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Each week, a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take you, the author, to the next level. You'll learn tips and secrets on how to create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve book publishing success by making one very simple change in your book's journey. How to avoid the publishing predators. How to create an author and book platform that rocks. Learn how to make a living with your words and your books. Learn how to publish a book that has no regrets and so much more. For more information, check out AuthorU.org, where authors who want to be seriously successful go. 
and Judith's website, thebookshepherd.com. Then join us again here next week for more. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Brought to you by Author You and the Book Shepherd. Thursday evenings at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. 